This is code.org. Let's take a look. If statement. Boolean expressions allow us to ask questions, but in order to use those questions to change the program's behavior, we need an if statement. Yep, we're going to say, hey, computer, if this is true, if we've crossed the finish line, if something happens, read the code for this race car program. What will the program do when the car reaches the finish line? Why is the if block inside the jaw loop? Okay, a few things. I'm going to work through this with you. As a teacher, I know a couple things. One, plagiarism is a serious issue and a problem. Do not plagiarize. I'm going to talk about this with you, but you must have your own answer in your own words. Who knows? Maybe I'm even wrong. So make sure you're creating your own answer for this. Two, as a teacher, when you hit run, you can't change what you submit. That's you submitting your answer. So make sure you like your answer before you hit run. All right, and make sure it's in your own words. If you found this, your teacher can find this. Okay, let's see now. Why if? All right, read the code. So here's my draw function. First, I set up the sprites that we saw in the last section. So the race car and the finish line. The draw loop is going to run 30 times a second. So 30 times a second. Zoop, zoop, zoop. It just repeats. We draw a white background. Then what do we do? Well, race car dot x is equal to the race car dot x minus 2. So race car dot x is equal to race car dot x minus two. That's the counter pattern. We're taking the race car's x value when the program starts. So this says, hey, race car dot x has a new value. What is it? It's their old value for race car dot x. The computer says, what the heck is that? Smack. Oh, wait, no, that's finish line. Smack. Here's the race car. Here's the x. Okay, so 400 when the program starts minus two. That's so now it's 398. It then checks if the race car is less than 100. Because if it's less than 100, we're going to put out winner. If it's not, zoop, we drop below. So we would only write winner if this is true. It's checking if this is true. Well, 398 is not less than 100. That's not true. So it just start, keeps running the code, draw the sprites. It draws the sprites and then goes back over. Now we white out the background so everything's blank again. We It's too fast for us to even see it blank before it draws a sprite again, but then it says new x value for the race car. Okay, well, what is it? It's the old x value. We just said that was 398. So now minus 2, 396 is a new value. If 396 is less than 100, still false. We skip over the winner line here, and we draw the sprites. Once it is less than 100, though, what do you think happens? The computer would say true. If I'm at the, if the race car is at 51, or I guess 52, the computer would say true. If well, 52 is less than 100. True. And we would print out winner. That's what should happen. So how I would word that is, and the reason we're checking every time is because we're using the counter pattern. So the race car's x value is changing every time. So every time, because we want to make sure the instant it has passed that finish line, we know. All right. So this program checks if the race car has passed the finish line using the x values of the two sprites, the finish line and the race car. The moment the car has passed, has the, an x position less than that of the finish line winner, oop, I need an explanation point because that's what's actually logged, is logged to the council. Cool. I can't wait to start using these if statements. Success!